In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. My dearly beloved, Sunday after Sunday, we come to church to live under the shadow of the cross. For through the cross of our Lord, joy has come to the world. The Lord himself died, shed his blood on the cross in order for you and I to be redeemed and to have a guide to life. There are so many people question on the mind and they ask, what is hope? People who get married today, they lose hope over conflict. They ask, what is affliction? Why sickness and trouble? And they ask, what is prayer? And what is love? Today, we ask why you come to church. This morning, we shall see the answer at the hand of St. Paul, who suffered much persecution, being jailed, faced sickness and shipwreck, and ultimately died in Rome. He'll give us the guide to live by as a human being here on earth. Within the church, my dearly beloved, he gave us the Lord, he gave us the church to remain in the church in season and out of season, in time of peace, and in time of tribulation, of birth, celebration of wedding, but also in time of death and remembrance as we are remembering your husband, your dad, your sido, your brother today, al marhum Anis. And every Sunday, we remember the founding fathers and mother. So what is the church? The church is like a ship, an ark, to help us sail through the winds and the storms of life and disaster. But as long as we have this church or this ark, we shall reach our destination. As long as we have this ark, we shall always be in peace. Someone of the church fathers said, there are three kind of people in the world. Those who have a flood within themselves, but no ark. And those who have both flood and ark, but they're not in the ark. And those who has a flood and an ark, and they stay in the ark. So what is the guide to our life? First, we need to know if you live a life without exemption. In, a word, in other words, you don't examine your conscience. You don't examine your fault, your sin, your imperfection. You always begin to judge other people. An unexamined life is not worth living. Yeah, you eat you drink, and you go to school and work. 
but you're like a robot. It's not worth living. In this morning instruction, St. Paul stated, and he said, you and you and you, be joyful, patient in crisis, and faithful in prayer. Who doesn't need that? Who is among us does not struggle without the image of the Holy Cross that we shall raise before you today? We live an empty life. Yeah, we have home, we have career, we have cars, we have money. But our life will have no balance. In almost 50 years that I've been with you, I have witnessed so much crisis and death and tribulation among us, even death. But you have also have seen my affliction and my pain and my suffering in my own life. And you walked with me as I walked with you. All the celebration, the birth of your children, I witness graduation of your children from high school and colleges, medical school and nursing school, and law school and teaching school and married your children and grandchildren. Yes, I've seen some of us lose their father and mother. I married a girl Friday that I took her by the hand when she was six years old to say goodbye to her father. And today she's a bride, she's a doctor, and she's a wonderful lady. Yes, my dearly beloved, the church, the ark, under the shadow of the cross, we are safe. All these things become possible because tribulation, affliction, and even death shape our character and makes us strong in us because the cross we carry with us. Jesus said, anyone who wish to follow me must deny himself or herself and follow me. When life become at odd with us, as we have faced the corona for the last year and a half, and it's coming back. We watch many affliction and lost many family member. But we need to be patient to endure. This patience is given to us by the cross of our Lord. Taking the cross of our Lord makes us humble and gentle in heart and we always find rest to our troubled soul. Why my dad died? Would I could do something different? One called me last week and said, should have never taken my dad to the hospital. But who knows? Who knows? Yes, my dearly beloved, be joyful in hope. Hope is not a fantasy or unrealistic reality. Hope gives to us by Christ because we confess that the Lord is our shepherd and our help. Without this hope, 
we have quit some 50 years ago and never built this church. And we would never become a community to gather together and pray every Sunday and to bless each other in this basilica. For the hope of Christ strengthen us when we are weary. Raise us up when we're down and open doors for us when all doors close. Do you know that how many times we went broke? Do you recall when this building had a lien on it? But I kept reminding the boys and the girls, we're not the builder, God the builder. Unless the Lord build the house, we will labor in vain. Every time I baptize a child, I place on his neck a cross to remind him that Jesus' grace is sufficient and his power makes us perfect in time of weakness. No one can separate us from this reality and the love of Christ. Now we come to address be so faithful in prayer. For what is prayer? Prayer to us like wings for the bird. We can fly even though we remain on earth. Prayer is a weapon against darkness. Prayer gives us hope. We need to lift our voice in praise laying them before the feet of the cross. It keeps us in touch with the Lord Jesus, who said, I am with you always until the end of time. So my dearly beloved, as you come to remember your loved one, the memorial for an ease. I remind you to be joyful in hope, patient in tribulation, faithful in prayer. All these are the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the crowning of hope, patient and prayer is love. The crowning of hope and patient and prayer is love. St. Paul said, let your love be genuine, not in hypocrisy. At every liturgy and in a few minutes before we consecrate the bread and wine to become the body and blood of Christ, I will say to you, let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. I know there are some people and family member who need to be loved from a distance. We all have that. Somebody said to me, I have two annoying people in my family. I said to him, I have five. And we need to love them from a distance. That's what the gospel teach. Nonetheless, we are to bless them and not to curse them. So my beloved, if we stay in the ark of the church, we will always rejoice in hope. We will always be patient in tribulation and always be constant in prayer. For the Lord is our help. In the name of the Father and the Son 
in the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.